I'll, I'll start with the obligatory questions. Uh, as the first Asian, as only the fourth woman to helm, what I would argue is the most essential, critical institution in the world. What does that mean? What, 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 how does that make you feel? Well, it's a big question. I am reminded all the time that the Academy, the Oscars, is the sun in a constellation of players. And awards are all built around the Oscars and PR campaigns and wardrobe and hair and makeup people and distributors and publicists, exhibitors. There's so much that surrounds that. But knowing how big that world is, and I decided that rather than feeling bigger myself, I actually feel smaller. And what I mean by that, it's not false modesty. Don't worry, I'm not that modest, even though my parents... She is that modest. But um, I was thinking about when I had a child, I felt smaller because suddenly I wasn't the center of my own universe. You know, before you become a parent, you're a child, because why wouldn't you just live for yourself? And so it's a similar thing when you face challenges in your life, as I did, and being you know, this Bing lost his father around the same time that my son lost his father. And when you face challenges like that, you realize, you know, there's so much else going on in the world. It takes attention away from you. And so I'm so caught up in what we at the Academy want to do. I'm working with this amazing man, Bill Kramer, the CEO, and we, we have so much going on. I, I feel like I'm just a cog. I know that, that what we say and do has a lot of impact, but it actually takes a lot of pressure off because there's, there's, I'm not, there's, there's so much going on. But I, uh, there's, there, we want to increase membership engagement. We want to internationalize the membership even more than it is. And it's already changed a lot. And it's certainly no um, secret that movies like Parasite winning Best Picture and um, so many other international films getting the attention that it has was because of membership. So I feel like we're, we're riding a, a great wave and I feel like I, I'm a pretty good person to be there at this time to continue the work that's already started. Another place that your uh, smallness and bigness manifests, I think, is, um, is how you've been so good at being good as a human being while delivering great work. So we heard, of course, the Joy Luck Club, the much lauded Shanghai Calling, Over the Moon. There's a lot of stellar projects coming as well that, that, that I know you'll announce soon enough. Let's talk, let's talk about some of the great tribes you build because one of your greatest superpowers is your convening power. How you can bring like-minded people together, deploy them against a singular goal at the highest levels and do so just so joyously. Uh, whether it's with Asian Women Empowered, AWE, which is my favorite word in the world, uh, your other various Asian communities such as your Mahjong Club or your women's clubs. Where, where how do I ask this in sequence? What is the future of Asian cinema? What is the future for women in cinema? What is the future for cross-continental cinema in that order? Dang, you said you were going to go easy on me. Um, what is the future? First of all, the thing about convening, I think, I, I think many of our life decisions are based on healing childhood wounds, mm. personally. And I think growing up, we were the only Asian family in a white community. You've heard the story before. Um, it does drive you in one way or another. You know, I had that little chip on my shoulder. Just calm down a little bit. But um, so I just love bringing people together that feel like family. And it's just that this is a one big family. And it, that part is the easy, joyous part, as you say. It's not difficult because when you find people that want that too, people come together and do so with, with great joy. So, but what does this mean for the future? The Daniels and Jonathan asked that really good question. What, what are we going to do for the future? Personally, I have a few things that are on my mind. I, I really believe we're lacking in human decency and respect, and I don't know how we can change this except through our daily actions. I mean, there is something very weird going on right now, the political divisiveness. I also think there's a lot of fear around climate change and whatnot. And I, whatever we can do to just walk the walk. I, I think that's all we, you know, and, 
and to and to build community to support one another. What about for women? Oh, for women, for women. That's right. You asked a question. Okay, women um, who hold up fifty one percent of the sky. Um, women need to run the world. I mean, it's as simple as that. I'm sorry. Because a lot of, and it's not all men, and it's not all women, and not all men are bad, and not all women good, but I guess I'm talking about the feminine principle, the female, the female spirit. Being around women, I, I, you should see these mahjong gatherings. I mean, it's a, they're potlucks, okay? We have so much food, you would not believe. Everybody is so generous. And then the cleanup. It's instantaneous. Nobody has to say anything. Like, everybody just rushes in, does the dishes, put things away. It's amazing, you know? And then it always works out. And there's a sense of collaboration that comes very naturally. I think maybe because we're nurturers, there's just... I, I honestly have... You know, we worked... I worked very closely with CAPE on this short, Asian Women Short Film Challenge. There's no ego... Yes, can't, yes, clap for CAPE. There's no ego... You know, Julia Gao is the most incredible philanthropist you could work with. It's all about doing the work. She doesn't work, care about the credit. She just keeps giving and giving because she believes. And it, that's an amazing... We never have an issue. We never have an issue about, oh, who's going to get credit? Who's doing more work? Or It's just easy. There are those who exist because they're announced by others. And there are those who exist only when they announce themselves. And of course, she said, you always want to be those who are announced by others. Because while the narrative can sometimes get away from you, and that's a problem that you want to be created, if your work is good enough, it'll speak for itself. And that's a Janet Young lesson. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I do feel that you know, there, are, I, there was a really funny a comedy skit that I saw where a guy comes out with a box. He says, this is the male brain. And inside the box, there were lots of little boxes. He's like, this is the sports box. This is the wife box. This is the kid box. This is the job box. This is, and this is the, their favorite box. It has nothing in it. But, but none of the boxes intersected. So they're in one box. They're not thinking about the other boxes. And then he came out and said, this is the female brain. And it was a mess of wires all tangled up. You couldn't separate one thing from another. But I think the way that, and I'm sorry to generalize, it's so ridiculous, you could totally disagree with me. No, go the for way it. that many women I know think everything's related, it's very holistic. We can't just do one thing and ignore the other. We can't say, my goal is to get from A to B and I don't care who I fuck along the way. You know, it's just different. So we're always, you know, it's just, we're always scanning the environment, what's the effect of this? And, Basically, what is the impact on human beings, on other human beings? And I think, you know, and there's a place for that other way of being where you just go from A to B because a lot of great things were invented that way. But I think we're at a point now in, in our world, in, in, our, in history, where we can't just keep doing that. We have to think about the consequences of our actions. Our last few questions. Yeah, what do you still worry about in your own life? It's so weird. I used to be a worrier. I'm really not much of a worrier anymore. I don't know how I killed that habit. But um, I think there, everything that I'm doing at the Academy, for instance, now, it's a balance. You know, there are people who want to make sure movies are only theatrically released, and that's the only way they're going to be seen. We had an interesting debate about that earlier today with on one of the panels. And then others, like, we have to just, we have to recognize all films on, on you know, uh, on streamers and I think everything is a balancing act I know that whatever decisions we end up making are going to piss off some people you know this is true of DEIA how inclusive or not do we set mandatory rules and guidelines do we do this so I think that I have to get used to the fact that it's impossible to please all the people all the time and just have conviction and do what you know what we think is right you know, it's, a, it's very yin yang, you know, it's very, uh, very Taoist to, to just find that middle road, I think, and know, know that there's two sides to every coin. So I think about that a lot. Uh, penultimate question. Um, uh, what have you still not done that you most want to do? Do I say it? I do, um, I do want to write a book. Uh, 
That's a lie. She does not actually want to write a book because she's not self-aggrandizing enough, but she should write a book because yeah, many of us I, need I it. Feel, well, I feel like I've had so, it's almost like while I still have my memory cells, I, there, there's so many phases of my life that I want to capture that I think could be interesting. And I want to put them down on paper before I forget. And while it's still relevant, um, it was interesting. I'm just going to give you this one little, should I mention this? Anyway, there, there, there's, uh, there are pieces, there, there are things you don't know. <laughs> and um, I was interviewed recently for a podcast about one, one phase of my life involving one person who was kind of a guru who kind of saw me as muse. And I just realized this, is, this would be, and it was kind of a little bit of my, uh, a little bit of my Me Too thing, and you know, it's just there. There are so many things that I have not not because I was hiding anything per se, but it just didn't seem that relevant. And as issues come up, they seem to take on more relevance. So that was what made me think that maybe it was time to tell all. <laughs> Very good. Last question: As Daniel Kwan asked, "What are we going to do with these responsibilities we have? What?" are the greatest priorities for the API community now writ large, and perhaps also in cinema? There is still not an Asian person writing big checks, green lighting movies or TV shows. We, we briefly had one running a studio. It's actually gone more the other direction. We talked about in one of the panels that DEI initiatives are being cut back on, and. And in times like this where there's an economic downturn, I think people become more conservative. And I do worry that um, we're never going to quite get to the top. Um, and Julia talked on the panel today about you know corporate boards and also Fiona talked about governor boards. You know, there's so much room for more Asian representation. There's so much more room for, for our wisdom, for our input, for... For I, I really believe strongly that if we take the best of East and West, we have the solution to a lot of problems. So sorry, one more quick question. One more quick question. So we have it to give so shout chatty. outs. Nobody's left yet. I keep I kept expecting Because you know who the boss is. Respect. <laughs> uh, this is church. Um, no, I think uh, what the the you hate it when I mention this, so so we'll mention it. Um, one of the one of the qualities I admire most about you is how young you are at heart and how young you are in in the am. spirit and executing. Uh, my question to you as 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 the godmother, just as Dominic Ng of East West Bank has done, just as Julia Gao often does, is is how have you successfully transcended generations in your work, and what do you want the I don't even want to call it next generation because all of you are still wildly relevant at your at your prime, but but what what do the rest of us need to do? I often think about this. I love hanging out with my nieces and nephews and children of my friends. It's really weird. Like, over the holidays, I think I'm going to be traveling with some 20 and 30-year-olds. I, I don't know what it is because I feel like I'm in the same place as them in the sense that I'm still incredibly curious about the world. I really feel bad, and I remember what it's like. I really feel bad for people who are in their, the second stage of their lives. I see a life as being sort of like a screenplay, you know, the first act, second act, third act, and the second act, which is always the hardest in a screenplay, it's really messy. You have, you're worried about your career, your children, your parents, you're this, you're like juggling so many things, and it's hard to just enjoy each day as it comes. I think that sense of curiosity is something we should all preserve as much as possible. And, you know, that's true for young people and middle-aged and older and whatever. I, that, that, to me, is the greatest gift. Is as long as you're curious about the world, then you, you can't have a bad day because it's all, it's all new fodder to think about. On that note, give it up for Jenny Young. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right. And because you didn't cry during this fireside, the Great Age Society team made a tribute video to hopefully make you cry right now. feel like, you know, we are finally being recognized as people of influence, I think, both in front of and behind the camera is an amazing uh, experience to have. My name is Janet Yang, and I feel inspired to tell stories that shift paradigms. Janet is the matriarch. Janet is a convener. Janet is a champion for our people, for women, for the arts, for every voice has ever been heard. 
An executive at Universal Studios found me and he wanted to open up China to American films. And I started now flying back and forth to China to distribute American films. Then I was hired to work on a Steven Spielberg movie, Empire of the Sun in Shanghai. And Janet gets credit for Joy Luck Club. It's not just historic because it was the first all Asian cast for a major studio film, it was historic because a woman convened this and executive produced it. Stone told me he was starting a company. I thought, what I really want to do is produce, what you can't really do as an executive. And he's like, oh, well, hire me. I want to. <laughs> so that, that was my next step. history of filmmaking for Asian Americans. I do not believe that many of us would be where we are today had she not opened the door and was a trailblazer in telling stories like Joy Luck Club that would allow women of color to openly express themselves and have relatability cross-culturally. You all know that Janet is a pioneer, bridge, supporter for Asian representation and AAPI community. And we want to make sure that her legacy and her work will live forever on this museum. The good news is that we have voices now, articulate voices. We have platforms that are reaching everyone. We're no longer sequestered and no longer in a bubble where we just have to make ourselves less seen less heard. It is time to speak up. Quiet no more. And sometimes it takes a crisis for us to come together even more strongly as a community and be able to speak as one voice. I was hired for the very, very thing that I loved, which is to try to increase Asian representation. I kind of proudly wore my Asian background on my sleeve.